the regular person, me and you, right? Us knuckle dragon slobs who go to work every day, whether you're a teacher or a lawyer or a construction worker or a mechanic. Well, you're finding it a little bit more difficult to make ends meet. Right now, seven out of 10 Americans say they are living paycheck to paycheck. Seven out of 10. Think about that for a second. 70% of the people listening to me right now have to wait till Friday before they can go maybe buy groceries because they don't have any money in the bank. They don't have any money in their pockets. They don't have any money in their checking account. They don't have any money in their savings account. Their credit cards may be tapped. All of it. Seven out of ten. And guess what? It's not getting any better. And what's the reason behind the idea that seven out of ten people are not able to actually make money, according to a couple different surveys. One, it's lack of financial education resources. So you don't have the ability to save. Well, there's two reasons. Let's get to this. So seven out of ten people, let's stick with this premise. Seven out of ten people have to, to go every single day sort of wondering about whether or not they're going to be able to make all of their bills or payments by the end of the week, end of the month. And I was thinking about this as I was coming in today. I said, okay, so there are a couple different reasons. One is inflation. No question about that. People have less buying power, so their money is not going as far. Clearly, people are not getting raises at the the level that inflation is going up. So every dollar that you spent six months ago is not going as far as it's going now. Number two, and this is our fault. We're terrible savers. We buy everything. Do you realize that there are people in America that talk about the 1%. The one percenters have everything. I was doing some research yesterday. You realize that if we looked at that from a global perspective, okay, the 1% are us. If you looked at it from the global sphere, like the rest of the world would make up the 99% and America would be the 1%. We live in a country that is vastly superior to all others. When you think about how tough your day is and you know how maybe you are having trouble uh, putting food on the table, it, is, it pales in comparison to what happened, what's happening in other countries, which is why everyone tries to come here, Okay. So we have to think about it. We have to actually put that into this equation as well. We have to sort of make sure that we understand that even though despite 7 out of 10 of us not being able to pay the bills at the end of the week or at least struggling to do that, living paycheck to paycheck, if you look at it from a global global perspective, we're still the luckiest people on earth. Lucky in a sense where we've been more ingenious and harder working and the the idea of a free economy and capitalism works, right? But Alexander Ocasio-Cortez and all of the other left-leaning progressives in Washington want to break that capitalist mold. They want to make us like the rest of the world. So despite the fact that seven out of 10 of us can't put together 50 bucks at the end of the week or seven out of 10 of us have more debt than savings. Actually, it's more than that. Have more debt than savings. We're still the most fortunate country in the world. We're still the freest country in the world. We're still the country that gives you the best opportunity to make a difference. But the, but the reasonings behind why we Struggle at the end of the week or end of the month. You're going to be somewhat shocked by these next couple of statistics. If I asked you, are there more McDonald's in the United States or more self-storage facilities in the United States, what would your answer be? I know before I looked this up, I would have definitely said McDonald's, right? Feels like there's a McDonald's on every corner. It feels like there's a McDonald's in every uh, you know every cityscape or multiple McDonald's everywhere, right? Everywhere you look across the country, 
There are 14,146, excuse me, 13,837 McDonald's as of 2019. 13,837. 13,837 as of uh, 2019. You know how many storage facilities there are in the country? As of 2019, 47,863. Almost four times as many. Three and a half times as many storage facilities as McDonald's. And you might say to yourself, well, what does that have to do with the fact that I can't pay my bills at the end of the week? It's because Americans are consumers. We buy. We buy and we buy and we buy and we buy and we buy when we don't need stuff and we buy more even though we don't need stuff and we you know, we know people who have five pairs of shoes and 10 pairs of shoes and 50 pairs of shoes. And yes, I know someone who has over 100 pairs of shoes. Okay, you have the right to have that. You have the right to, you know, have a, a, a closet filled with the most fancy attire that you want to have. It's, it's completely up to you. It's your money. But in the end, when you don't have any money in your bank account, well, that's your fault. And we have, you know, we're a culture that collects stuff. So of the 47,863 self-storage units, they're probably filled or they're all filled with your stuff. Stuff that, you know, your house being as big as it is can't even fit your stuff in the house because there's so much of it. So, yes, I'm sympathetic. I'm certainly sympathetic to the idea that seven out of 10 folks are having trouble making ends meet. I think right now, mostly it's because you've got a, a, an idiot in the white house who has completely r- ransacked the financial system in the way we do business and has, has caused your dollar to be worth less. But on top of that, we can be pigs. I hate to say it. And I'm not telling you not to buy. That's not what I'm saying. I say you do whatever makes your heart you know, fill and swell with joy. That's completely up to you. But when you have almost four times as many self-storage units in the country as McDonald's, and I'm sure those self-storage units are filled with stuff, maybe we buy too much stuff. Maybe we buy too much crap. Maybe we buy too much Chinese crap. Maybe we buy too much stuff that we don't need. So... I'm just saying that before you complain that you don't have any money, well, maybe you should look at the ideas. Do you, you know, do you go out and do you spend five hundred dollars a week on going to restaurants? I'm not saying don't go to restaurants. I'm not saying not frequent them. Don't take this the wrong way. This is not an anti-capitalist speech. It's a pro-capitalist speech. It's just be careful because. You know, we can complain, you know, as a group, we do a lot of complaining, right? We're we're great at complaining and not always that great at solution solving. Well, my solution, if you're not being able to pay your bills at the end of the week and you're saying, well, seven out of 10 of us are having trouble, maybe, just maybe, maybe once in a while, look at yourself and say, well, you know, maybe I don't need this, you know, extra, you know, extra fancy shirt. Maybe I have enough for now. Maybe I'll take that 60 bucks and park it in the bank. Now, do I do it? Not nah, probably not. Not as much as I should. Right? But I'm just telling you. You know, we, we well, I guess the point of this is that yes, we complain a lot. And uh, most of the time it's legit. But sometimes we probably have to take a step back and say, "Wait a second. Some of this is brought on by me." Right? I'm part Yes, the economy stinks. Yes, jobs stink. Yes, uh, you know, people are being underpaid, underemployed. No question about any of that. And that's all happened here in the last year. But before you, you know, go pointing your finger at your either your local legislator or somebody else, maybe, just maybe, take a breath and say, you know, maybe I, I should stop spending on frivolous items. Maybe. Maybe. But that's completely up to you.